Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 14. 14. And this week we'll be talking about uh, how we replace Chris Tierney as the third line center. Uh, we'll talk about Eric Carlson and where he's gonna line up in the lineup. That's right, and we'll also maybe have a little bit of story time, but also Oscar award winning Randy Hahn is on the show. They scored! Uh, that was great. Uh, I feel like I should do the uh, the Pavelski <laughs> dragging the glove. <laughs> yes. Big score. So uh, yeah, really big news. Um, Randy Hahn decided to uh, be part of the show with us this week. We're super excited to have you on. Thanks for being here. Really yeah, do appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. This is I, I've been on podcasts. Mm -hmm. I've been on video podcasts. But this is my first ever web series. <laughs> so um, after this is over. Episode fourteen tonight. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back home and binge watch the other thirteen episodes. <laughs> so I'll probably be awake doing that until the regular season opener. Uh, you can great. binge watch as well if you want to go check. Yeah, us out I can't think of anything it. else you'd want to do. Me <laughs> neither. We do have the playlist set up, so yeah. uh, one through fourteen, we'll have that going for everybody Perfect. too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we just wanted to, to catch up with you. How was your off season? What did you do? Off season was great. Obviously, it, it came a little too quick for all of us in Sharks territory, right. but. Um, after spending what seemed like a month in Vegas, you know, <laughs> Vegas, I don't know about you guys, Vegas, for me, max, 48-hour town. I was going to say you know, two days. You know, in... Yeah. You go hard, yep. you probably don't sleep very much, then you sleep all day. <laughs> then you try and go as hard the second night, yeah. and it never happens. And uh, and then it's time to go home. But I think we were there probably for five days in a row at one stretch, you know, <laughs> wow. over the over the, uh, the playoff round, and then back the second time as well. But after that, uh, I decided to really dial it down, and I went to Cabo! <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did that, and uh, really spent more time uh, than anything this offseason season on Vancouver Island in Victoria nice. uh, where we have a family home so mm -hmm. uh, enjoyed it up there was there try and always be there for July 1st which is Canada Day mm -hmm. nice. which is Canada's 4th of July except it's the 1st of July <laughs> but the US doesn't celebrate Canada Day and guess what in Canada they don't celebrate the 4th of July mm -hmm. so <laughs> and then on the 4th, Ju 4th of July just uh, by happenstance ended up uh, spending it in uh, Washington State in a town <laughs> called Port Angeles this time tiny little ferry terminal town. And it's one of those places where on the 4th of July, it's red, white, and blue all over the whole town. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the town ends up in the parade. So it's like wow. the people watching slowly snake to the end of it so that they're in the parade. <laughs> like and then the line. people that are done at the end, they go back to watch the other people. Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, that no, that was great though. So just kind of a summer of that and spending a lot of time in the Bay Area. Saw some great live music in downtown San Jose. Toots and the Maytals. I mean, who gets to see that in downtown San Jose? That was a that was a, a highlight. Um, my second time uh, in my life seeing seeing Cool and the Gang live. Yeah, nice. oh, um, yeah. You know, and celebration, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That song was still going when the Sharks <laughs> won their first ever playoff game. So, um, really cutting edge uh, kind of music. I was uh, avant garde kind of music. Uh, Toots and the Maytals and uh, Cool and the Gang. So that's what I did this summer. Uh, so how much prep work goes into a game beforehand? Well, I t you know, it's an ongoing process. I mean, obviously, with the amount of information that's out there now uh, on the Internet and the other sources, the media relations stuff that's pushed to us every day from the Sharks, there's a mountain of information, both in the regular season, obviously, when the games are going on, mm -hmm. and even in the off season because there's there's the Stanley Cup, then there's the draft, then there's free agency, uh, and all of that. So it's, it kind of goes on in, into July, and you're always kind of checking it, even mm -hmm. in the off season, to keep up. But you know, if you put a, if you put a number on what it would take hours wise to get ready for a game, it would probably be ten to twelve hours that you spend. Uh, you know, even during the day of the game, hours spent pile up, getting ready, mm -hmm. going to practice and and stuff like that and just doing your notes and sitting on airplanes flying mm -hmm. to cities and you you've always got your stuff out and you, your mm -hmm. book and doing that the stuff that uh, that all of us who do play by play do so it's probably something like that but it's probably more than that when you add up all yeah, the hours right. you spend reading and just collecting information yeah Could you take us through like a uh typical day of a game day? Well, game day, it's, uh, it's it varies slightly on the road, but uh, for example, at home, uh, the Sharks practice on game day at 
uh, Solar for America ICE, which is their practice facility. That's something new under Pete DeBoer. In the prior years, they would always have their morning skate of day of game at SAP Center. He decided to change that, and uh, it's been that way now for probably about four years, three or four years. Hmm. Uh, it adds a challenge to it for us, like he would care. <laughs> he cares about the team and winning. But uh, so all of us, when I say all of us, the broadcasters, hmm. um, Dan Rosanowski, myself, Brett Hedekin, Jamie Baker, um, we, you know, Dave Maley was on our broadcast. Mm -hmm. He's moved back to Minnesota now. Uh, Devin Setaguchi is going to be uh, contributing this year. Oh. And we've had others like Owen Nolan and uh, Kyle McLaren and Curtis Brown. Anyway, we'll, we'll all go to Charlotte. Parks Ice, Solar for America Ice, sorry, <laughs> um, about 10 in the morning, and the Sharks go on about 10, 15 a.m., and they'll do their 30 minutes on the ice, basically, and it's just a chance to, you know, break a sweat, get mm -hmm. gets the guys out of bed, gets them down to the rink, they have breakfast first as a group, and then uh, we see the line combination. So that's when we get a first real good idea. You have a pretty good idea if, if they practiced the day before. They tend to practice that day before mm -hmm. the way they're going to play the next day. But maybe they had the day off the day mm -hmm. before. So you'll see pretty much who's in and who's out. Guys who stay on extra after everybody goes into the dressing room after that morning practice, those are usually the guys that you know aren't going to play because they're doing that extra work, skating, uh, conditioning, You know, trying to, trying to be ready if called upon. Uh, and then we shuttle over to SAP Center and watch the visiting team go through that same oh, wow. process before we were able to do it in one building. And when we're on the road, uh, we're usually able to do it in one building. Okay. But there's exceptions, like in L.A., the Kings always practice in El Segundo out by LAX. So to go all the way out there and then go all the way back to Staples to see the Sharks, yeah. it just it, it doesn't make sense. Unless it's an NBCSN game, and then I'll usually split it up with whoever I'm doing color with, and one of them will go to one mm -hmm. practice and I'll go to the other. Sure. But just to wrap it up, um, watch the other team go that's through that same process. It's the time when we get access to the players to talk to them. Um, coaches, uh, assistant coaches, whatever the case may be. And it's it's just a chance to glean a little bit more information and, and get some one-on-one uh, -on -one time with the guys. Yeah. And then once they get into their game mode later in the afternoon, you're not going to get that access, except yeah. for maybe a, a quick 30-second on-ice interview that they're required to do right, right. for television. Uh, then what I'll usually do is go back home, uh, and I like to get in a run, get some exercise in, uh, maybe rest for half an hour just close my eyes do some more uh, going over my notes and stuff and then I'm usually back at the arena by about 4 4 30 for a 7 30 game and then you know the rest of the guys are there and we're chatting we're already watching the early NHL games mm -hmm. in the East Coast at our desks right and you know again you're picking up more information all the time you might be watching a game of a team that you're gonna play on the next road trip so you kind of have an eye on it mm -hmm. even though you're thinking about a game that night then up to the booth usually by uh, six o'clock and then there's rehearsals to do pre-recording to do uh, again it depends if it's one of our nbc uh, sports california games or if it's an nbc sn game those things vary um, we rehearse what we're going to do at the open obviously mm -hmm. we can't rehearse the game <laughs> but we rehearse the stuff we can plan and go through that make sure we at least go through it once so that everybody's on on board and then we always uh, do that open live whenever we can just to give it that good live fresh feel I feel like when we tape it people know it's taped it just yeah. seems mm -hmm. taped yeah. uh, or recorded so once we do that live game on and once the game's over a uh, quick post game interview when we win Right. Uh, and when we lose, we usually never interview anybody because yeah, what's the no point? Talk, <laughs> and uh, and then that's it. So you know the day starts with uh, being at that morning practice at 10 a.m. and when you leave, it's usually 11 p.m. So it's a long it's a day. Long and the, the the oddest thing about what we do, and I'm not asking for anybody to feel really sorry for us because <laughs> we have great jobs, but typically. You know, if you were a brain surgeon, mm -hmm. uh, you would go to work in the morning and start doing brain surgery as soon as you got to work or shortly thereafter. We go to work in the morning and we don't do our actual on air presentation until, uh, you know, Seven, 10, like, yeah. 10 hours right. into our day, yeah. 11 hours into our day. So it's odd. You have to be your best at the very end of your day. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Gosh, and here I thought you just showed up and talked hockey the whole time. Well, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I see them going over there. Just, uh, oh, hey, yeah. there's a whole lot of work that goes into it. My goodness. Well, you had mentioned uh, player interviews uh, either during the game or after the game, and I'm sure you've interviewed tons of Shark players over the years. Uh, can you think of a specific player that you've uh, really enjoyed, either past or present, or both past and present, that you enjoyed uh, the interview or that you look forward to every time, uh, and maybe why? I'll be honest. Okay. I do not. Oh. <laughs> because because I, I, I think as, especially today's player who's, you know, got a real, real good representation mm -hmm. and the agents in today's game prepare these guys for everything. Yeah. They don't just negotiate their contracts. They work on media. Mm -hmm. The NHLPA works with them on media. Except I think what they do is tell them to be really boring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and not and that's 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 the crazy thing because our guys aren't boring. Mm -hmm. They've got great personalities. Yeah. They're hilarious. Um, and you know, off mic, off camera, they're like Every hockey player, yeah, right? Yeah, they're yeah. they're you know giving it to the rest of the guys in the in the locker room and having fun and pulling yeah. pranks and and doing that uh, all the time on the bus and in the hotels and all that. But then the <laughs> lights come on and they go corporate. <laughs> yeah. So it's usually just a, a kind of a cliche-ish moment. But in all honesty, and it's not just for us in the NHL or in this marketplace. We're trying to get their faces without their helmets on. Yeah. Mm -hmm without that generic look when they're on the ice because mm -hmm. you have to kind of check their number and name to see who it is because yeah. they do look very similar mm -hmm. with the same gear on. Right. Uh, it's a chance for their helmets to come off and for fans, some of whom are more hardcore than others, I have this theory every time we do a game, there's going to be somebody watching who's never seen the Sharks before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've never seen that guy before in an interview, and they don't know who he is maybe. Mm -hmm. And we have to always be conscious of that, especially in a place like this where, you know, even though the Sharks are in what, you're 28 now, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not a, a real long time when you compare it to, you know, more traditional teams like the NFL, baseball, sure. basketball teams. So we still have work to do and to <laughs> making inroads. And it's really a moment to show the, the fans who these players are. But if you can get some personality out of them every once in a while, it's great. And w when Brent Burns comes on, he's occasionally <laughs> great. And Joe Thornton, yeah. of course, Still can't wait for him to score four goals. <laughs> and, and then you get the guys who are honest. And, and that's why sometimes I wouldn't mind if we had players on after a loss. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Boyle comes to yes. mind as a guy who never, he never, uh, Sugar you know, tried to sugarcoat yeah. a bad game. Even if it was his own performance that was lacking in his mind, he would talk about that. And another guy is Logan Couture. Like he cuts mm -hmm. to it, and he's he's tough on himself and on the group, but in a in a constructive way. Right. And I think that's a good balance. People like to see that because then it becomes real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would agree. Um, so let's jump forward. Maybe end of this year, next <laughs> year. Let's say the Sharks win a cup. What would your ideal parade? look like well we've already had a parade <laughs> today you guys, no you guys know about the parade the sharks have already had oh the uh -oh, fin factor's got to get a history uh -oh. lesson here tonight <laughs> okay here we the go. Parade when they opened up 1993 94 yeah. was the first season oh, at okay, san jose yeah, arena yeah. and the sharks took out detroit in game seven mm -hmm. jamie baker's goal but still in my mind because of the historical context, biggest goal in Sharks history, although Jonas Donskoy winning a game yeah, in the Stanley Cup yeah, Finals yeah. and overtime was pretty good too. But to me, the, the Baker moment was a, it was just a historic moment in the NHL because mm -hmm. uh, we had made a 56 point improvement over the year before. The yeah, year before, yeah. we were 11, 71, and 2. Yeah. And I want to tell you, in those two ties, we were really good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, Sharks knock off Detroit. It's like shocks the hockey world, right? Yeah. Number one seed, Red Wings, they're going to go all the way. Uh uh. This upstart team with this guy named Urbe, and they do it. So then we go into the second round against Toronto. Game one, we win in Toronto, and it's like, here we go again. Yeah. And of course, that went to game seven, and unfortunately, the Sharks lost that series. So now we're, we're home, you know, and we've all been around the game long enough to know that we didn't even really technically get halfway to the cup. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to get eight wins, and we had seven. Mm -hmm. City of San Jose says, we want to have a parade. And, and we're all like, no, no, no. You can't have a parade. We didn't win anything. Yes, you did. It was a new thing. And, you know, it brought the city together, which it did. And so the compromise was a, a civic celebration. Okay. But it was still parade. people on 
truck beds and fire trucks and convertibles with people sitting on the top. That's a parade. Yeah. Um, but it was called a civic celebration. Um, I, I'll never forget this. And if you ever get Jamie on the show, and his fee will be much higher than mine, um, so it'll be harder for you. Um, Jamie was on one of the fire trucks, right? Yeah. Jamie Baker scored the big goal in round one. And he's standing next to the 49ers rookie who had just won the NFL Rookie of the Year, Dana Stubblefield. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. And Dana Stubblefield is in this parade. And Jamie's going, hey, Dana, <laughs> how are you? Jamie Baker from the Sharks. And Dana's all, hey, how are you doing? And, and Jamie said, why are you here? And Dana said, <laughs> I don't know. They told me to show up. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Dana Stubblefield in this uh, lost a, round a two parade. Hazing kind of thing. Uh, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> you know, it felt uncomfortable until we were actually on the stage and they nice. did the things they did, and you could just feel the the love. Really, it was love yeah. because you have to go back to that time. 1994, downtown San Jose was just kind of finding itself. You know, mm -hmm. the arena was brand new. Mm -hmm. The Fairmont Hotel was kind of the centerpiece of downtown, and the convention center was coming, but it wasn't done yet. Mm -hmm. And you could see the, the rebirth of, of, of downtown San Jose happening, and people were excited about that. But more than anything, it brought the community together because San Jose sports fans supported all the other teams, yeah. the San Francisco 49ers, right, right. the Oakland Raiders, mm -hmm. the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. The earthquakes were there, but you know, admittedly in those days, they didn't have quite the cachet that even they do in the MLS now. Mm -hmm. The earthquakes were still not considered on the same plane as the other pro sports yeah. teams. So yeah. San Jose never really had that team that they could call their own and, and right. take that civic pride in and turn on ESPN Sports Center and yeah. see their city <laughs> talked about. And that happened. And that brought people together. On uh, the night we beat Detroit, you know, by all reports, people were high fiving in the streets coming out of bars in San Jose. <laughs> you know, if Adobe came out with the greatest computer product ever tomorrow <laughs> and was announced, would people pour out of bars and high five? No. <laughs> Even though that's much more important to the importance sure, of the world yeah. than a hockey team, mm -hmm. but hockey teams bring people together. Yeah. It creates community and, and civic pride, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened, and you could feel that at that rally. And if there ever is a parade, we, we used to joke, this is one of the great Sharks um, inside jokes of all time, until we got the um, uh, airport permissions at uh, SJC to land after 11.30 p.m. because it's, a, it's an airport yeah. with a curfew because of the residents nearby that are affected by the, the noise and the noise abatement laws that exist. We always had to land in Oakland. So it would be a long road trip that ended in Boston yeah. two nights before Christmas, mm -hmm. fly home for like six and a half hours, but we're not home yet. Mm -hmm. Land in Oakland, then get on buses, then drive to San Jose. So we always joked, if there ever was a parade, it should be from Oakland Airport <laughs> to San Jose, because that's the, the, the journey in buses that we took more often wow. than not. But you know, that's a that's something you, you hope for. And when the Sharks got to the finals two years ago against the Penguins, you started to think about it a yeah. little bit more, but you, you don't want to put it in the front of your mind until you're actually up th by three with five minutes to go <laughs> yeah. in the deciding game. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, obviously it would be a, a great moment for uh, Sharks fans um, and, and for downtown San Jose to have something like that uh, to call their own. Yeah. And uh, I think it'd be pretty special. So hopefully that happens while I'm still around. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it happens when we're still around. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Mm -hmm. So actually, I'll do uh, some lightning round questions for you then, if, uh, if you don't mind. We're just going to do a list of favorites, essentially, and we'll just see what you have for your sure. favorite. So uh, favorite non-hockey sport? Probably soccer. I did more of that than anything else. That's right. Uh, in fact, that probably more than anything else led to me doing hockey. Uh -huh. um, I'm originally from Edmonton, so... Uh, you okay. know, the joke I use the, the joke I use on the rubber chicken circuit is every Canadian kid is born with a hockey stick yeah. in their hand, which makes for a lot of <laughs> difficult births. <laughs> Don't step on my punchline. Sorry. Um, I forgot. This is a web series, so you can edit. Um, but soccer was the opportunity I had to do play-by-play -play first. So I did two World Cups, uh, did U.S. national team games. I was the voice of the San Diego Soccers in both, well, in the NASL and the old MISL. And that's sort of where I cut my teeth in play-by-play. -play. And then while I was doing that, I got the opportunity to be the pre-game inter intermission and post-game host for the LA Kings. Um, so that was that's the right. first yeah. 
TV hockey job I had. But uh, yeah, soccer will always be close. And I, I, for the first time probably in two or three World Cups, I watched almost every game of this last World Cup. And it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the only disappointment was that the U.S. wasn't in it. But it was like the best World Cup I've ever seen. Nice. Yeah. Really That's cool. Great. That's fun. Uh, favorite road city? Favorite road city. Well, different cities for different reasons. Hard to hard to um, trash talk my hometown Edmonton. Okay, <laughs> it's always special to go there. Mm -hmm. um, nice. You know the Gretzky yeah. cups, uh, the passion that fans there have for it. In when you go there in the winter, it's winter. Yeah. <laughs> it's always hockey weather. It seems <laughs> in Edmonton. Uh, unfortunately, um, our broadcast experience couldn't be more different. Uh, from where we sit in the new the new Rogers Center than it mm -hmm. was in the old uh, Northlands Coliseum where we were right over the game. Mm -hmm. um, they've stuck us in the rafters and unfortunately it's now one of the worst points wow. of view for the broadcasters wow. in the whole league. I don't know why they did that, but uh, gosh, I think might have had money uh, to do, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cut on the cost, stick the announcers back there. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, f for other reasons, Montreal. The tradition, yeah, mm -hmm. they that is the best broadcast location in the NHL. Nice, the whole French aspect of it. Uh, going to a game at in Montreal on a Saturday night when it's on Hockey Night in Canada and the fans are singing and um, it's <laughs> cold out and everybody's Crap. bundled up. Yeah. Nothing quite like it. Um, Nashville's become a favorite uh, on the ice and off the ice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great environment yeah. there. And you know, there's there's other cities as well. Minnesota, great vibe in that building. Nice. Um, really enjoy going there. Um, and I've, I've got to hand it to Vegas. Uh, you know, it's it's not a favorite <laughs> yet because I want to see what they do this year. If, yeah. if it's going to be the same yeah. show, you know it won't because yeah. mm -hmm. they're too smart for that. And they're too ahead of the curve for yeah. that. And they're charging too much for their tickets <laughs> that the fans <laughs> won't tolerate that. But it, it was pretty cool to see what, what they did. Mm -hmm. And even though the Sharks couldn't get by them in the playoffs, it was great to see a franchise come from the ground up and just establish themselves. And, and that city get a, a collection Active civic identity through that team that they never really quite had before. You could really feel that. Very cool. Favorite movie? Favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption. Okay, nice. cool. Typical guy, favorite movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite band? Favorite band? Well, Toots and the Maytals. Oh, no, yeah. I'm just going to throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, my, my musical spectrum is all over the place. I was going to say, I don't know your musical spectrum. What no, you I, I just, I like so much of everything. Okay. So, I, you know. Anything um, you don't like. I'll say favorite all-time artist, Gordon Lightfoot. How Canadian is that for you? Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, restaurant, maybe something in, in downtown. Favorite restaurant. Favorite restaurant in San Jose would San Jose area would be Aldo's in Los Gatos. Oh, okay. It's um, I don't know if you've been, but oh, yeah. it's yeah. they have the Sharks Shrine when you walk in the door. Yeah. Um, Aldo's uh, a friend, and yeah. he's been a friend to Sharks players going way back to the day, <laughs> and the guys still to go there for their uh, game day lunches. A lot oh, of them. That's cool. Carbo load. Yes. And <laughs> the food's through the roof, so that's Very my favorite cool. restaurant. Nice. And favorite new Sharks web series? Uh, I'm liking a lot with that, <laughs> the, what are they called, the teal? No, oh. it's the... No! It's Ouch. the fin factor because they're <laughs> fanatical about their web series. <laughs> nice. There you go. All right, let's talk about the trade, the big trade. Uh, first off, Chris Tierney is gone, so that opens up a hole in the third line center. Uh, who do you think would be able to fill that spot? Well, I think from what we've seen in training camp so far, there's two candidates, and, and those would be Antti Suomela, who we haven't seen in an NHL regular season game before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's question marks about that. But obviously the Sharks saw him in the Finnish Elite League enough last year that they felt he's got an NHL game. And so far, what I've seen in a limited amount of yeah. um, practice, right. scrimmage, and in one case, a, a preseason game, uh, looks to be the real deal. And uh, then you have Dylan Gambrell, who we saw briefly at the end of last year, mm -hmm. and um, a great opportunity for him to, if not push Suomela for that third line center job, certainly lock down uh, a job on the uh, on the fourth line. Mm -hmm. So those are the most likely candidates in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's fair in the in the way they've played so far. 
There's always guys, though, that, you know, show up in training camp. And, you know, the classic, the best example probably in Sharks history was when Mark Edward Vlasic came to his first camp and he was 18 years old and yeah. there was no room for him. And, you know, Daryl Sutter was the coach and there's no way Daryl Sutter was going to let an 18-year-old kid stick around, right? Well, right. wrong, because Daryl Sutter's a smart coach. And uh-huh. if that kid can outplay everybody else that's vying for that spot, he sure. gets the job and yeah. Vlasic did. And, of course... The rest is history, and and we don't know yet. You know, as as we do this, we just don't know yet if there's going to be that player who who emerges and you gets to the point where Doug Wilson says we we can't keep this guy off our team. He has to be on our team. Right. Uh, that player hasn't shown himself yet um, beyond Suomela and um, and Gambrell, but we'll see. Um, but I, I I feel confident in the depth we have and with others that, as we say, haven't maybe shown it yet, that mm-hmm. there'll be some good competition for that job. And n- neither of those guys is just going to get it by default. Because in that case, then, you know, Wilson would have to say, look, I might have to go out and make a deal here right. to get somebody to fill that spot. Mm-hmm. But I don't sense that's in the offing. I think they have a lot of confidence in who they have. Yeah, and we had talked a little bit about that, too. Uh, maybe Wilson not being quite done yet and perhaps not going after that number one center, but maybe a fourth-line center type yeah, player if, like if Cambrell's yeah. not able to step in. Well, and you also have the option of Tomas Hurdle. Uh, you know, yes. if, if things yeah. don't work with the two we mentioned, mm-hmm. you can move Hurdle down, uh, maybe a, a winger who... Uh, has a chance to play up, takes that spot. Somebody like a Sorensen mm-hmm. oh, who yeah, showed yeah. really well in the playoffs mm-hmm. last year. You have some flexibility there to, mo- to move Hurdle around as well. Right. It's very good problems for uh, DeBoer to have. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of good problems for DeBoer to have, uh, who did we just acquire? I can't remember his name Well, now. based on the open to your last show, which I did <laughs> see, I think you were pretty pumped about uh, yes. EK65. <laughs> <laughs> you made yes, it rain. I I mean, yes, they're you all $1 You don't bills, see that on every web series, <laughs> yes. folks. Uh, he's he's gonna fit in somewhere in the lineup, and he just got into town yeah. yesterday, uh, so he's made it to one practice so far. Um, I think today he was with Vlasic. Um, we talked about the show. We actually talked about it one of our first episodes. If we were to get Carlson as a, it was the it. first episode. Actually, it was yeah. the first episode. Yeah. If we were to get Carlson, how are you gonna fit him in the lineup? Right. Would you split up Vlasic and Braun, who are just such a good shutdown mm-hmm. defensive pairing, or? split them up and then you have Burns and Carlson on the ice at all times practically during the game and Vlasic so you have three Norris Trophy candidates playing the entire game yeah yeah you know what it's a great problem for Pete DeBoer (laughs) to have and I can't think I can't think of too many comparable situations Nashville's blue line before the trade, I think was the best blue line in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Roman Yossi and uh, PK and and the rest of that group mm-hmm. there. That's a pretty elite group. Um, the Sharks D probably caught that group and maybe passed them. We'll see. Yeah. It'll it'll you know show itself once the season starts. But you know, I it's what fans do. And it's what people who cover teams do is pick that stuff apart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it. It's going to be so much fun to watch what DeBoer does. <laughs> As you suggested, he could keep lefty, righty, and keep Braun yeah. and Vlasic together, and keep Burns and uh, Ryan together, and keep Dylan, uh, put Dylan with Carlson, and mm-hmm. then you have lefty, righty, and you have your three big D on the, on the ice for the whole game. Or you can get creative and mix them around and put Carlson with with Vlasic as you suggested put Carlson and Burns out together for a shift and see what <laughs> you know take the puck away from us yeah. you know try um, as we saw in today's scrimmage they 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 played 3 That's on right. 3 mm. and it was Burns Carlson and Pavelski and Pavelski <laughs> as Pete DeBoer said afterwards has never had to defend that much because <laughs> the other two guys weren't weren't playing back Pavelski yeah. had to yeah. had to cover so there's just so many options. Uh, people will will appreciate this once the games that matter begin on October third against uh, Anaheim. But yeah. Eric Carlson, even through the injury situations he's had in surgeries, is one of, if not the best skaters in all of the NHL. I won't say he's better than Connor McDavid, but he's he is an unbelievable skater mm-hmm. and has unbelievable vision combined with unbelievable skill. Mm -hmm. And when you bring all those things together and he starts developing the chemistry with the incredibly skilled team we have, not to mention the blue line, which we've we've dwelled on, you know, Thornton, a first ballot Hall of Famer, and Pavelski, uh, you know, tremendous um, hockey brain Mm -hmm. and skill. 
with um, Evander Kane, who we've only <laughs> had just a, a cup of coffee with, yeah, essentially, yeah. last year. And then he got hurt and wasn't 100% in the playoffs. He starts brand new with a new team and a new outlook. Yeah. Logan Couture, who arguably is the Sharks' best forward, mm. he's got the numbers to back it up. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and Timo Meyer, his emergence, yeah. and Hurdle, who we who we talked about, and Sorensen, and so on and so on through the lineup. Um, this is just going to make everybody a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention what Carlson himself will do. So the problems of where to play him and all <laughs> that. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Sharks oh, territory, yeah. Sharks nation, because this is not a big problem yeah. uh, for Pete DeBoer. It's a luxury, and as he said today in the in the news conference we were at to welcome Carlson to San Jose, I don't need to change Eric Carlson, and Eric Carlson doesn't need to change to adapt to what we do. Eric Carlson needs to play his game. Yeah. <laughs> and that world-class Hall of Fame, potentially, mm -hmm. and, and certainly Norris Trophy winning game fits on any team in the NHL. That's just the, the, the fact. And it's, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun to see him play. And, you know, in the past, he's been a guy who's, who, who can play close to 30 minutes. Yeah. But he won't need to here because mm -hmm. of the amount of ice time Burns gets. Right. Vlasic's a, a, you know, a 22, 23 minute a game player, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes more. Uh, and maybe that will even uh, make him a little bit better and, and keep him fresh for that power play time. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the power play all of a sudden, especially <sighs> when four on three. Can yeah. you imagine yeah. that? That's yeah. sick. Well, yeah. so, and, and that was one of the things we, we wanted to ask too was we were trying to figure out what the power play lines in episode one or whichever one it was yeah. if we were to get Carlson would you split them up would you pull them together I mean I don't, what would you I mean do you, you think there's all five kinds of things you yeah. could do you could even you could even put Burns and Carl or you could put Carlson and and Pavelski on the points and play Burns up as, as a, a forward yeah. and crash yeah. the net and yeah. create yeah. havoc there yeah, there's, yeah. I'm not saying that's what DeBoer's going to do he's going to coach the team not me but there's <laughs> a, there's a whole array of things yeah. that now become possible mm -hmm. because you have not only one of the best players in the world but he's a right-handed shot defenseman mm. and it just it's it's a you know just it's like having that southpaw in, in baseball you yeah. have that that ace left-handed <laughs> pitcher that's a tough one for everybody to hit yeah for I sure think you could leave them both out there the entire power the whole time Carlson and Burns just stay out there and just rotate the forwards three around. forwards going in going out and that's works it. for me <laughs> <laughs> sounds good uh, well uh, we were talking about with Eric Carlson and hopefully um, you know you get some some time to, to maybe get to know him a little bit better and maybe get generate some some cool stories with them we have a thing that we do on the show uh, or what's called story time and it's basically any interactions that Aaron and I have had with any of the Sharks players uh, I'm sure you've <laughs> got a really great interaction with Sharks player of some sort that you wouldn't mind uh, sharing with with uh, Sharks nation here all right because this is a webcast we're not subject yeah. to the fcc uh, right. censors, you got censorship it. laws right i'll tell you this one <laughs> this one goes way back when marty mcsorley was with the san jose uh, sharks yeah. and we had a tough team at one point i think we had marty mcsorley tim hunter and dave brown were all on the team <laughs> right around the same it was just like oh my god it was like a gong show um n nobody wanted to mess with us yeah. you know we unfortunately we just weren't good enough to take advantage of all that protection that we had yeah. but anyway so we're in vancouver and we're at the pan pacific hotel and it's a day off and it's super bowl sunday mm -hmm. so uh my mother lived on vancouver island at the time and when i was in vancouver and had a day off i would either go over there and visit her uh, or she and my father would come over. But on this occasion, she was going to come over by herself. And she's about 70 years old at the time. Mm. She's 91 now, still still going strong. Ah, so got nice. the long bloodlines in the yeah, family. Got to love good. that. And she has very a full good. head of hair. Nice. Not that I'm vain. <laughs> um, but so we're, we're in the hotel, and the team decides to have a Super Bowl lunch. You know, not going to call it a full-blown party because we're yeah. there for business and there's a mm -hmm. game the next day. But all the guys are going to watch the Super Bowl up in their rooms anyway. doesn't matter who's playing. You're going to watch that game, sure. right? So Daryl Sutter's the coach and he says, let's get a ballroom. Let's get a real nice buffet for the guys and uh, we'll have a bar with some beers. Nothing, no hard stuff. Just just some beers and this and that. So And he, and he invited the broadcasters, which was kind of Daryl. Still nice. one of my favorite coaches we've ever had. Yeah. Um, so I had my mom coming and I want to watch the Super Bowl too. visit with her so I have to ask Daryl the tough question I said 
can my mom come to the Super Bowl <laughs> party? And he he already knew her, and she's yeah. she, she's a sweet German lady, and and I grew up in Alberta, and so did Daryl. So he said, no problem, just bring her. He said, you know, enjoy yourselves and have a good time. So I bring my mom into the party, and everybody's <laughs> looking right, and I could sort of go off to the side, and uh, and <laughs> it's time to eat. So the guys all go through the buffet first, and everybody's got their food, and you know they're having a cold one, whatnot, and the game's on. So I go up to the buffet with my mom, and I'm helping her up there, and I'm getting her a plate, and you know putting on some nachos and some a hamburger and stuff like that. And I get her seated with her plate, and then I go up with my plate. Marty McSorley is sitting in the table closest to the buffet line. Gets up, walks over to me. He goes, "Hey, Honor." I said, yeah. He said, who brought the stripper? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Nice, Marty. jeez. Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's classic. Yeah. That was one of the funniest oh, things. And, and I told her, <laughs> and she's such a sweet little old German lady, and she says, oh, does he think I'm that young? <laughs> Oh my god, that's great. Uh, a great moment in Shark's history. So there you have it. It's Jeez. public now. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but I'm sure she's watching. I'm sure. Awesome. I'm sure she's binge watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. I really do appreciate it. There's one other thing we wanted to bring up. Um, there was, I can't remember the name of the app, and I'm sure I'll bring it up. But uh, my an old boss of mine, actually, Patrick Lasiste, just had you do a very custom message for his wife. Yeah. So did you want to go ahead and talk about Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's an app called Starsona. Yeah, S T A R S O N A. And you just download download it uh, off the App Store or Google Play. <laughs> and um, what it allows you to do is to get um, celebrities or, or <laughs> sports figures to right. do personal messages yeah. on video to you, and they're delivered right to you via email. So a typical thing would be uh, someone wants a shout out, shout out to their girlfriend because it's her birthday and mm -hmm. she's a big Joe Pavelski fan and she's been a Sharks fan forever. So I get all that information emailed to me um, and then I record the video on my phone at home mm -hmm. and hey, Sarah, your boyfriend Jim, you know, wanted me to wish you a happy birthday and I know you guys are big Sharks fans and blah, 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 go Sharks. And then she gets that delivered to her by her boyfriend awesome. as a surprise. It costs 25 bucks, mm -hmm. and I don't get all of that. Some of it goes to the company that's doing this, Starsona. They're, they're a business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm donating my proceeds to the Sharks Foundation. So nice. uh, it's, it's kind of new, but it's yeah. starting to pick up steam, especially yeah. with the season. So if anybody wants a, a shout-out, birthday, anniversary, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, um, <laughs> divorce party, um, <laughs> whatever you want... Uh, um, within reason, um, and I also apparently do stripper announcements now <laughs> too. So yeah, um, twenty-five bucks, and it's a fun way to surprise somebody and uh, get in the spirit of the shark season. That's super awesome, fantastic. Anything else you want to chat with the say over here? Or you good? Oh, I, I could keep going. I know, right, but I kind of want to let them off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of episode. Before 14. we wrap, I, yeah. I brought my I brought refreshments. Oh, okay. I brought, I brought post. I brought post uh -oh. web series refreshments. Oh. All right, uh, they're from my favorite bakery. Oh. You didn't ask me that. Why? You only asked me where my favorite, favorite restaurant was. Oh, okay. This is my favorite bakery, Frost Cupcake Factory, nice. uh, Campbell, California. Um, owner Andrea Buswell, who won Cupcake Wars on the Food Network. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, I don't deal with anything that <laughs> oh isn't an award-winning bakery. <laughs> oh my! That and these amazing. are the Fin Factor. Wow. Cupcakes. So you guys want to grab one of those uh, each? Yeah. I, go ahead. I, I need yeah. Jump I need in the space there. to grab. Ruin it. Wow. And God. what flavor do we have here, Andrea? Uh, oh my goodness. Chocolate with vanilla buttercream. Chocolate oh, with lemon. vanilla buttercream. Check that. the logo. Especially done for the Fin Factor. Wow. That's amazing. Frost Cupcake Factory. Uh, check them out. Downtown Campbell, California. Um, best cupcakes in the world. Amazing. This thank you so there much. You and I, I, you. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this, <laughs> and I will do it off camera to save you guys that yeah, I don't massacre. Get all stuck in my so. <laughs> 
with that, Randy, thank you really for stopping by. I really Good appreciate to meet you guys. Love the no, with you. seriously, love the show. Love what you're doing. Love the passion. Great. Thank and you. Uh, I think people are starting to catch on to it. And love your set. Thank, thank you. you. Just like everything, yeah. though, in Hollywood, <laughs> it looks better on TV than in real life. Yes, <laughs> that's true. So one last thing here before we say goodbye. We have this little uh, Fin Factor Season 1 uh, print right here. We're going to get uh, anybody who gets on the show to, uh, that we're interviewing and, and speaking with, we're going to have them sign around the border there. So episode 15, you should see a nice little Randy Hahn signature right on there. 14. And we'll probably get uh, 15. Oh, this is 14. It, it, sorry. And we'll get Essen. Thank you. And we'll get Essen on there too. <laughs> we're, we're still keeping an eye on you, buddy. So uh, hopefully we fill this thing up before the end of the season. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But we will see you guys next week. Next week. See you on, see the, you air. on the air. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.